Hello and welcome back to the 43rd episode of my still unnamed survival series. Today we're making pants. Yes, we are actually starting today off by making pants. I want to add Swift Sneak 2 to these diamond pants, and then we're going to go exploring in the deep dark again. This time we're actually going to try and use some wool to silence our sound. The main thing we're after today is items. I want to collect as much skulk and as many things from chests as I can. Without dying, anyway. I think with the addition of Swift Sneak, avoiding the Warden is going to become a lot easier. And of course, we can't go in the deep dark without some night vision. We gotta be able to see those chests to open them up. We are back, standing upon the precipice of the darkness, and into the deep dark we leap. I'm pretty sure I've already grabbed everything out of these chests. Okay, I think we're good. Does opening up chests make sounds? Yes. Yes, it does. I do want this, though. I feel like I could do some pretty cool things with this piece of redstone. I kind of want one of these things, too. Can I actually mine these? Ooh, if I break this, will it call the ward? Ooh, that's not what I want. I do want to get to my safety scaffolding, though. Oh yeah, that's definitely the warden. Okay, he's gone now. Let's do it again. Oh, God, this is a lot of sound that I don't want near me. Leave me alone. No, you can't be good. Leave me alone. Ah, okay. I guess we're going to go over here for a bit. <laughs> I think I would like some more of these things. I have no idea what they do, but they look kind of cool. And they summon the warden, so the less of these, the better. I'm trying to get rid of all of those before I open up the chests, and that seems to be working pretty well. Oh my gosh. Is that what I think it is? I'm pretty sure that's a stronghold right next to the deep dark. I'm pretty sure that's the closest portal. Oh, what? What is that? What is this? Oh, oh, that's pretty cool. It lights up things. Well, I think it's about time that we head back to the village and look at our loot. And this is what we got. I'm really excited about a few of these things. I want the new music discs. I have one of them, but I'm really excited to make this new one. I've got seven of these. I don't think that's enough to craft it. No, I need two more. Dang it. Guess the deep dark is still in our future. But we do have this other new music disc that I'm really excited to take a listen to. Like Pig Step, this is also arranged by Lena Rain. Let's have a listen. enough of that. I am pretty excited about all the skulk stuff as well, so I think we're gonna mess around with those for a bit. I want to see everything these do, and if I can summon a warden in the village. I don't actually know how any of these blocks work, so this I don't think can detect sound on its own. I think this just makes a noise and summons the warden that way. I think it has to receive a signal from this thing. Oh. Okay. That's right. But there's no warden. Cool. Okay, so I think we're safe to use these in the village without the risk of death and complete annihilation. Good. That's good. I don't know what these things do. Are they affected by sound? I don't think so. Interesting. I think you can also block sound with a wool, too. Cool! That thing didn't shriek, so that definitely works. Now I just need to figure out what these blocks do. Get out of here, llama. I don't want you here. Oh. That's what they do. Now that I have kind of an idea about what Skulk does, I heard we can do something cool with a compass and these crystals. Something about a death compass? Oh, recovery compass. That is severely less cool than a death compass. 
Oh, can't even make it anyway. Need more of these. Dang, we really gotta go back to the deep dark. Now that we've gone through all of the loot from the deep dark, I have noticed something. In all of my escapades down in the darkness, I've lost a lot of armor and a lot of tools, and I would like all of those replenished. So I think we're gonna go for an end run and loot a few of the far end cities. Try and get back everything we lost and maybe a bit more. I've kind of turned my end portal village into my colossal sand mine. I've pretty much stripped out all of the normal sand from this whole area. Like we've got floating pathways, floating houses. It's kind of a mess over here. Hey, look at that. The outpost got rerolled. That's pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Those are relays. Oh, that's so cool. This is the first time I've actually seen them in game. Now that I know these guys are here, we're definitely going to come back and rescue them eventually. But for now, we're going to leave them riding in their cage while we pillage this pillager outpost. Mine now. I wonder if this raid farm still works. It does not. Well, now that we've finally made it out to the end, let's actually get some raiding done and make it out to these far end cities. The goal is purely for armor and other forms of loot. Not really going for shulker boxes at the moment, so we're probably not going to do the shulker tubes and we're just going to go in, find the chests and get out. After that not so quick escapade in the end, we have a full shocker box of elytra and a little bit left over. We also have three more boxes of various loot. We've got a full stack of diamonds and quite a bit of golden armor. This should replenish what we lost to the warden and hopefully will last us quite a long time. I was just walking through the village and I realized it's been a while since we added anything to our mega base, so I think I'm going to pop over there for a bit and start working on the top of it. I want to get most of my mega base done by the next world tour, which will be episode 50. So we have a lot of work to do if we want to reach our goals. So enough dilly dallying, let's get into it. looking gorgeous. This whole thing is coming together really beautifully. This top crown section is only part of what this is going to be. There's also going to be a large spire on the top with details and buttresses. I've, I've got a whole plan for this. But for now, I plan on going back to the village and adding another little storage section for our colossal item sorter. We need to add a new building and a whole bunch of new redstone pieces and parts to the underside of this little section. I think for this edition, I'm going to try and use mostly all the pieces and parts from the building that we demolished. I have a lot of stuff left over and I just kind of want to use it. I don't want to waste it because it's it's a lot of resources, you know? I'm thinking I'm going to build it right behind this one. I have a lot of empty space between here and the dock and I kind of want to fill it with something. I have this idea in my head of a little shopping cart or wagon. Something a little vendor will, will carry around from town to town filled with goods and park it somewhere in a shopping center. This is kind of the idea that I'm going to go for. We have this little axle with wheels and I'm going to try and turn this into some sort of covered wagon almost. I'm building up the frame here and the idea I'm going for is a two wheeled horse pulled wagon leaning on the end like it's been set down and it's just resting here. 
I've got the base for this up, and I have a feeling that I should probably add the redstone soon. Because if I don't, I'm gonna have to tear some of this apart, and I don't really want to do that. So I think the next step is to add the redstone dropper towers, just so we don't have to tear this apart once we're done. I've had a pretty good long think about how I want to arrange this redstone. This is actually pretty tricky to fit in this. This is a really small build with very thin walls, and it's pretty tricky to hide everything. Especially with my heavy use of trap doors, if a block is powered in the wrong place, it'll it'll flap a trap door, and I don't want that. <laughs> right on this little section is where our first chest is gonna be, and up here on this little pedestal is where the second chest is gonna sit. This is definitely gonna be very tricky with the second one. This redstone is all exposed, and this is the very back. I had to turn this system in the complete opposite direction as the first one, because it would have been exposed on that side too. And I'm not entirely sure how to hide this. Eh, we'll come back to that when this is finished. For now, I want to build the rest of this little cart and put a covered portion on this little wagon. The inspiration for this build is actually coming from two different types of wagons. The early American covered wagons and the rickshaw. I'm gonna try and merge the two ideas as seamlessly as I can while still maintaining the Viking theme and idea. This is my first attempt at any kind of vehicle, and I think it's turning out alright. It might be a little bit of a stretch for my blended themes, but we'll see how it turns out. For the covered portion, I'm going to be using quartz blocks and quartz slabs, just because, well, quartz has slabs, and this is kind of at a slope, and slabs make slopes easier. I would have liked to use wool just because I like the texture of wool, but for aesthetics and shape, we're going to be using quartz. I think I came up with a pretty elegant solution for how we're going to cover up this redstone. I need a crafting table over here, and it makes sense that a traveling wagon would have a crafting table on it, so we're just going to put a crafting table in the back. It still gets powered, there's nothing around it to move. I think that's a pretty good idea, but we're just finishing up the final details on our wagon. I think this turned out really good. Now that the wagon and the upper side of this little system is completely finished, we need to start working on the redstone. So I'm going to clear out the side underneath our wagon so we have room to work. Unfortunately, I realized this after the fact, but where we put our shop is a little bit outside of our square. So we're going to have to dig and make some room on the outer sections behind our sorting system just to give us room for the water lines. Before we start designing those water lines, I need to build up the rest of these redstone systems. The good thing is now we don't actually have to design these systems, we can just build them because they're already designed. Which is perfect, because that, that definitely took a while to figure those systems out. I also designed these to where they don't use any glitches or anything like that, so the likelihood of these ever breaking with an update is very, very slim. So I think we're going to start building the shulker box loading system. We need two of these. We're only going to be sorting out two items for this little cart. This system is going to be slightly different than the ones for the other buildings. Each building is definitely going to look a little bit different than the one before it. This we have to funnel items to a completely different direction. So we're not going to have these bulky item elevators. I'm probably going to shoot everything into a water line, which is then going to get put into item elevators directly underneath the cart. I've got the shulker box loaders built and connected to our item sorters via a water line. Now I need to figure out how I'm going to get the shulker boxes from the- What just shot me? Anyway, next I need to figure out how I'm going to move the shulker boxes from the shulker box loading system up to our cart. And to do that, I think I'm going to build place. What are you doing? Thank you. And to do that, I'm going to build one of these little auto item dropper things. So as soon as the shulker box fills and drops, it's going to move automatically into a water line silently using a small little redstone circuit. No fuss, just easy. So I was just laying out the ice paths and I just had a realization. I should turn these. This would make so much more sense and try instead of trying to shoot them into each other, I should just turn them and put them in the direction of where they're going to be going anyway. That makes a lot more sense 
and I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. But we're gonna be shooting them out towards the center and then wrapping them around to go in between our water lines up top. This should give us plenty of room for two distinct water lines for two distinct items. I've got both of these water lines going towards the center for a water elevator, which is gonna lead into more water lines going to item elevators. This area might be a little convoluted and a little overcomplicated, but honestly, I still think this is the best way to go about it to move items to where they need to go. Before I actually build up the item elevators, I need to figure out the elevation they're going to. So I think I should probably work out where these item elevators are gonna end up sitting before I can actually finish up the rest of these water lines. I need to have a destination before I build the road. So I have a rough idea of where this is gonna end up. So I'm gonna build these water lines accordingly and then just build around it when it's finished. That's honestly probably not the smartest thing to do, but it's definitely the easiest. Now that our water lines are marked out, it's time to finish them up and connect all of the pieces. I do still need to work on the timing of our item elevators over here. These are a little different than the ones we have on the ground, so I'm not exactly sure I'm gonna put these together. It's definitely gonna be similar, but it still needs to work exactly the same. After a fair bit of tinkering, this is the system I came up with. It's pretty much the same thing, just rotated 90 degrees, and it's one redstone shorter than the other system, which might have some unintended effects that I'm not sure of yet. Oh, why didn't you work? Well, it works with one, so I guess that's all that matters. I've now got our shocker box loaders primed and ready to go. How do I get out of here? Oh, that's a maze back there. These are our shocker box loaders. I've got them primed, ready to go, and they're gonna load up the shocker boxes, drop them out into these water lines. They're gonna go around these systems, through the water lines, up and then around again. Then they're gonna hit the item elevators and make their way to the shop up top. Pretty simple. Now let's give it a test. So I've grabbed these four different shocker boxes. They are slightly randomized with what's in them, but they are both grass and dirt. This is what this item sorter is going to be sorting. I have a lot of grass and dirt and I really just needed a bulk place to put it. So we're gonna send our shocker boxes down and see if it functions right. It does look like everything is making it to their proper places, so I guess we're gonna wait here for a couple minutes and see if we have a shocker box waiting for us when we go up top. All right, let's see what we got. Nothing. That's not good. We got two in there. That one's working. What, uh, what went wrong here? Oh. Well, one's stuck in there. There should be two. Huh, that's uh, that's not good. Okay, I found the issue. I missed a piece of redstone on the shulker box loaders. So when the first shulker box broke and was filled, the second one would not dispense. So it was filling and then not putting out a new container for it to fill again. That's why we got one and not a second one because that system of second dispension was not working. It's working now though, so we're good. I am actually really happy with how everything went today. We didn't die to the warden. We got all of our stuff in the end. We built this incredible looking wagon with a working sorting system. We also found some LA's. We're gonna have to do something in the future with those guys. This was a jam packed episode and I loved every second. I hope you guys did too. So if you enjoyed today's video, like, comment, maybe even share the video. And I definitely hope that you check out some more videos on my channel. But I really hope you stick around and watch some more of my up and coming adventures. But as always, my name is Red Skies, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. If you made it this far in the video, thank you. I really appreciate it. And as always, if you have any tips or tricks for using DaVinci Resolve or video editing in general, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your opinion.